speaker is someone who I have had the pleasure of doing a lot with, with the Healthy Initiative, and I'm so excited to introduce her. Dr. Suzanne Bruce is a graduate of Rice University and Baylor College of Medicine and founder of the multi-physician practice SBA Dermatology. She has received numerous awards and honors, including being named Super Doctor by Texas Monthly 19 consecutive years in a row. That's a lot of students in class, right? She is passionate about sharing how a whole food, plant-based diet can improve your general health and your skin health. She will present evidence on a plant-based diet and how it can reverse many skin diseases and improve the aging skin. I know all of us ladies are ready to hear this. Dr. Bruce, please come Please welcome her. All right, let's get going. Thank you for having me. And let me figure out a space bar. Okay, so we're going to be talking about how this type of eating can help your skin health. And as Dr. Greger likes to say, we want to base our recommendations on evidence. And this pyramid is the um, evidence-based pyramid for medicine. And you can see at the top are things like the systemic reviews, systematic reviews, meta-analyses. And at the bottom, oh, thank you, he's gonna make it. Okay, perfect. At the bottom are just expert opinion, and then you get case reports, and then as you go up, case, uh, cohort studies, um, and then you get the randomized controlled trials and so forth as the quality of evidence goes up. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research dollars being put behind looking at how diet affects skin. We have some studies, which I'll present some of the ones we have today, but you know, based on my expert opinion, I definitely think a whole food plant-based diet is the way to go, but let's look at the evidence that we do have. So, we're gonna be looking at how diet affects skin aging, how it affects inflammatory skin diseases, and skin cancer. So let's start with skin aging. The vast majority of aging of the skin is due to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, like 90% of what causes our skin aging. Also, smoking plays a role, pollution, poor sleep, and poor nutrition. So this is a striking photo that's on the internet. It shows a truck driver who drove a truck for 28 years. So that left side of his face where the sun's coming through the window of the truck, you can see he's got much more aging changes on that side than the other side. So this is what we typically see with aging, with wrinkles, laxity, roughness to the skin, kind of a yellowish, sallow color. There can sometimes be visible capillaries brown spots, and skin fragility, which can result in easy bruising, especially like on the forearms. So a whole food plant-based diet can help prevent some of these things because it provides the nutrients, the vitamins, the, the um, minerals necessary to keep the skin cells younger, and it excludes the bad stuff, the saturated fat and cholesterol from animal products, which damages the skin cells. And Dr. Ornish in his study showed that a whole food plant-based diet can lengthen your telomeres and reverse the aging process of DNA. It also reduces the toxins like the advanced glycation in products in the blood and increases the amount of antioxidants when you eat a whole food plant-based diet. So why are the antioxidants so important? Because the sun exposure is causing oxidative damage to the skin cells and the chemical reactions that occur from the sun exposure result in reactive oxygen species, and the antioxidants will neutralize those ROS. So they've done lots of studies in the skin showing that the antioxidants and eating whole food plant-based can reduce redness that comes from chronic inflammation, reduce DNA damage, reduces the markers of inflammation, and reduces the damage to the collagen and elastic tissue in our skin. So where do we get the antioxidants? Of course, they're in the plant foods. The plant foods contain 64 times more antioxidants than the animal products. And green vegetables have the highest amount of antioxidants of any vegetable, and berries the highest amount of any fruit. And our previous speakers alluded to that about how we really need the leafy greens and the berries. So the darker colors 
translates to more antioxidants and those anthocyanins that Dr. Bernard was talking about earlier. There's also studies um, rating the anti-inflammatory um, effects of food. They looked at six major biomarkers of inflammation and developed a dietary inflammatory index. And the most anti-inflammatory were turmeric, green and black tea, ginger, garlic, and onion. So those are good to incorporate into your diet every day. Another process that affects how our skin ages is called glycation. So when we have a high blood sugar level, uh, uh, level in our bloodstream, the sugar molecules can bind to proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, resulting in these advanced glycation end products, or AGEs. So these AGEs are produced in, the, in our skin naturally in the presence of hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, but they can also come from ingesting them in food. So what happens when you get this glycation is illustrated in the lower schematic there, where you get cross-linking of the collagen fibers, and that makes the skin stiff and vulnerable to mechanical damage. Some authors have referred to this as sugar sag. So how do we avoid sugar sag? You can see this picture of a forearm. The skin looks kind of saggy. The, there's wrinkles there. And then the skin fragility results in easy bruising on the forearms. So ways to avoid it, limit hyperglycemia, eat a low glycemic load diet. So that would be avoiding the processed foods, things with refined uh, white flour, sugar, and so forth. And you want to include fiber, vegetables, and vinegar is also good for limiting hyperglycemia. There's also a number of spices that can inhibit this AGE biosynthesis. So you can see garlic, cinnamon, and lots of the other spices there, and tomato paste. And then you want to limit ingestion of these preformed AGEs, and those are mostly in the meat, the cheese, and the processed food. The other thing that really shoots up the AGE levels are the grilling, roasting, and frying. So that you want to avoid as well. So moving on to some of the clinical studies, looking at actual patients, um, they did one study in uh, Greece, Australia, and Sweden, and they showed that people that had a high intake of vegetables, legumes, and olive oil was protective against sun damage, but the people that were eating a meat, dairy, and butter in their diet, they had more sun damage evident on their skin. One done in American women showed a high intake of vitamin C and linoleic acid, which is found in the leafy greens and the nuts. Those women had less wrinkles, less dryness, and less thinning, but the people that had a high intake of fat and carbohydrates had more wrinkles and more skin thinning. One done in elderly Dutch women showed a red meat and snack dominant, i.e. processed dietary pattern. They had more facial wrinkles, but a fruit dominant diet, they had fewer wrinkles. And then in Australia, they did a longitudinal study over 15 years and found that the people that, who ate the most high antioxidant foods had 10% less photo aging of their skin than those who had the low antioxidant. So now moving on from skin aging into skin disease, why do we get skin disease? Well, there's a famous saying in lifestyle medicine. Let me go back here. Here's my back button. Um, there's a famous study, genes load the gun and lifestyle pulls the trigger. And that's the same with these skin diseases. You can be genetically predisposed to psoriasis, but you may not manifest it unless you're having these unhealthy lifestyle factors like, like the poor diet. And even things like male pattern baldness, which we never thought uh, diet was affecting that, now some of the research is showing that, you know, in populations like Asia, where they ate more of a plant-based diet historically, as they become more westernized and eating more meat and cheese in their diet, they're getting more male pattern baldness in China and Japan and, and other Asian countries. So we're gonna talk about some of these diseases. So a huge factor that um, we're going to hear more about with our next speaker, but there's more and more research coming out all the time about how an unhealthy gut microbiome that is coming from an unhealthy diet causes many of these skin diseases. So you can see here at the top with a plant-based diet, that leads to a rich and diverse microbiome in your gut with with a predominance of the healthy bacteria, but a Western diet heavy with um, fat, meat, cheese, animal protein, that results in what's called gut dysbiosis, which is the unhealthy gut microbiome, where you get less of the beneficial bacteria and overgrowth of the bad bacteria. 
So let's talk about a really common one is acne. 85% of young people 12 to 24 experience at least minor acne. And when I went through my training um, back in the 80s, you know, we were taught that when you hit puberty, your hormones kick in, that activates the sebaceous glands. Sorry, it keeps going forward. And then the uh, oil glands start putting out oil and that tends to get over proliferation of this P. acnes bacteria and the pores get clogged up and then you get the red inflamed bumps. But we were never taught anything about diet playing a role, but now the research is showing that diet does play a role. And one clue was these ethnographic studies when they looked at these populations around the world, like in Papua New Guinea, South America, in pre-World War II Japan, in the Inuit and Canada, these people didn't get acne. And then as like in Japan or in Canada, as their diets become more westernized, then they started showing up getting acne. So how is the diet affecting the acne? So this flow chart, if you look at the bottom, on the bottom right, you can see dairy and meat, and meat and dairy contain leucine, an amino acid, and that leucine triggers this mTOR pathway. The mTOR pathway then makes the skin produce more oil, the sebum, and then it tends the hyperkeratinization is the clogging of the cells lining the follicle, and so that excess oil and the clogged follicles lead to acne. The other thing that does it in our diet, at the bottom you can see where it says high glycemic index or glycemic load foods, things that spike your blood sugar, the refined uh, processed foods and the sugar in the diet, those cause the insulin to go up and your IGF-1 to go up, and then those go up and trigger that mTOR pathway, which leads to the oily skin and the clogged pores. Also, the fat in, our, in the diet causes an unhealthy gut microbiome, and that can lead to the oily skin and the acne as well. So if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, that typically has less than 10% of its calories from fat, but according to the CDC, the average American gets about 36% of their calories from fat in the standard American diet. And a lot of that is like saturated fat in cheese, the pizzas, the cheeseburgers, the tacos, the Mexican food that we all, all used to love. But <laughs> So this is a book that I recommend to my teenage patients with acne. It was written by Nina and Randon Nelson. They're the twin daughters of Jeff Nelson, who's a prominent vegan. Um, he, founder of Veg Source, but they were vegan all their life, but when they got to be teenagers, they started getting pretty bad acne, as you can see in the photo there. And then they began to realize, aha, it was from the high oil. They were still eating like peanut butter, um, restaurant food with oil, and uh, processed food, and that high oil in their diet, when they cut that out, their acne cleared up. And then they wrote this book and it goes through kind of the science and explaining it and as well as their own journey. So I recommend that to kids with acne. Now, another condition kind of related to acne is what we call rosacea, which is often referred to as adult acne. It affects about five and a half percent of adults, it affects both men and women. They get a lot of redness across their cheeks and they can get little pimple-like outbreaks and flushing and it's very unpleasant. And the research now is showing that a lot of the people who have rosacea also have an unhealthy gut microbiome. And they have many GI problems like um, inflammatory bowel disease, H. pylori infection, esophageal reflux. And so both the gut problems and the uh, rosacea it, are thought to be coming from this unhealthy gut microbiome. In addition to that, they have increased rates of coronary artery disease if they have rosacea increased rates of um, insulin resistance, and even uh, neurologic problems like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So this study from last year looked at uh, dietary patterns in acne and rosacea, and they concluded that it was beneficial for ac acne and rosacea to consume vegetables, legumes, oily fish, and olive oil, and it was beneficial to avoid the meat, cheese, and alcohol. There's not any double-blind randomized controlled trials of you know, diet and rosacea, but we do have lots of anecdotal reports on the internet about people who converted to a plant-based diet and their rosacea went away. So that's certainly what I recommend to my rosacea patients. Um, moving on to uh, psoriasis. Psoriasis is 
A very common inflammatory skin disease affects about 3% of American adults, and it seems to be getting more common. And psoriasis patients, now we even think of it more like a systemic disease. Not only do they have inflammation on their skin where they get red, scaly, crusty plaques, but they also have higher rates of all these problems, higher rates of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, psoriatic arthritis, fatty liver. And once again, it's getting back to the gut. The psoriasis patients have an unhealthy gut microbiome with a reduction of the beneficial bacteria, and that impairs that gut barrier and allows bacteria to get into their bloodstream. And then that activates the immune pathways, which gets the immune cells attacking the skin cells, resulting in all this skin inflammation. So now when we see patients with psoriasis, we really emphasize getting checked out for all these other systemic inflammatory conditions that go along with it. We also have research showing that the fat intake really contributes to the inflammation. So the saturated fats in things like butter, meat, tropical oils like palm oil, like I put the Oreos on there because they have palm oil in them, but those increase interleukins and create inflammation. And also the high amount of unsaturated fatty acids like in margarine and refined vegetable oils like corn oil, those promote inflammation. And then our omega-6 omega to omega-3 ratio, if you're eating the Western diet, that very high ratio decreases insulin sensitivity and promotes inflammation. So all of these things contribute to psoriasis. So this study from last year was concluding this is the kind of nutrition we should be re recommending to psoriasis patients. High fiber diet, i.e. plant-based diet, omega-3 fatty acids to increase those, and of course, lessen the omega-6s like the um, margarine and the palm oil and all that. And then lots of polyphenols, which are in the plants like berries, apples, nuts, cocoa, and make sure they're getting the vitamins A, E, and C and the trace elements. The studies that we do have on the dietary patterns in psoriasis show that, as you might expect, the standard American diet, they have higher rates of psoriasis, as well as higher levels of inflammatory markers in their blood. And diets that have been shown to improve psoriasis are low-calorie, Mediterranean, protein-restricted, and vegetarian. We don't have any you know, good control trials looking at whole food plant-based, but there's many, many anecdotal reports of people reversing their psoriasis when they got on a whole food plant-based diet. Another very common skin disease, especially in children, is eczema. It's an inflammatory condition with lots of redness, dry skin, itching. These kids can be just miserable with the itching. And the prevalence does seem to be increasing. Um, and it, once again, the gut microbiome turns out it's abnormal in eczema patients. So it's that gut skin axis. And they, studies have shown that in eczema patients, they have decreased gut microbial diversity reduced proportion of the good microbes and increased proportion of the bad actors. So this is what we think is happening. It's referred to sometimes as leaky gut, that when patients have that unhealthy gut microbiome, they get an increased gut permeability, and that allows the toxins, food residues, and pathogens to get into their blood circulation. And when those things reach the skin, they release these pro-inflammatory cytokines that make them itch and become all inflamed. So if we can heal the gut microbiome, then we can heal their eczema. Moving on now to hair loss. Again, when I went through my training, we had no clue that diet could play a role in hair loss. That was like, wow, we, we didn't even realize that. But I'm just talking about these two uh, forms of hair loss, the autoimmune hair loss called alopecia areata, and that usually starts in patches where they just lose circular patches and then it can become more and more extensive in some people going to the extent of like losing every hair on their scalp and their body. Um, that, that's the autoimmune form. And then the more common one is what we call androgenetic alopecia or also known as male pattern and female ladder, uh, pattern where men you know, thin out or men can even go totally bald or women will typically just thin out and not go totally bald, but it's, it's very common. And it's becoming more common in Asia. I think 
um, I think I mentioned earlier, as their diet has become more westernized and they're eating uh, more of the standard American diet type foods in Asia, the male pattern hair loss is going up in Asia. So this was the first study that really opened our eyes to that maybe the gut plays a role in alopecia areata. This was a kid that age 16 began to get alopecia areata hair loss. By age 20, he had lost almost all his hair. And he also had a gut problem where he had Clostridium difficile, overgrowth of a bad bacteria in his gut. So they gave him a fecal transplant from a healthy patient into his um, gut uh, colon, and then he grew, regrew his hair just from getting the fecal transplant. So that was like, wow, everybody was so shocked when that happened. But now, again, more and more of the research is showing that gut microbiome is playing a role. So we don't have, again, controlled trial studies, but there's anecdotal reports of reversing alopecia areata with a plant-based diet. These are two identical twins, Jeremy and Jordan Allen, and they both had alopecia areata. And by switching their diet to plant-based, they both reversed it and grew their hair back. They started this organization, I love the name, All Love No Beef, where they go spread the word in communities uh, about plant-based diet. So, and there's a few studies coming out now about male pattern hair loss and diet. There was one from Taiwan that looked at men who drank soybean drinks three days a week or more had a 77% decrease in risk of male pattern baldness. And they thought it was the isoflavones in the soybeans. Another case control study from Italy found that men who had a high intake of raw vegetables and fresh herbs had less male pattern baldness. Okay, now we're gonna move on to skin cancer. And the vast majority of skin cancer, both the melanoma type and non-melanoma, are from UV radiation from the sun. And we have three different types, the basal cell carcinoma, the most common but least serious, squamous cell carcinoma, second most common, and then the least common but the deadliest or potentially deadliest is melanoma, the one that starts with a black, dark, irregular mole. And so, you know, using sunscreen, of course, helps prevent skin cancer, but now we have mounting evidence that eating an antioxidant-rich diet can also help prevent skin cancer. So that's gonna protect you from the inside as well as, as, well as you know, using the sunscreen on the outside, you wanna have the antioxidants in your cells. So I actually got to participate in this cancer study back in the 90s when I was at Baylor, and we took people that had one skin cancer and then we put them on um, a, a control group where they stayed on their standard American diet. And then the other group, we tried to get their fat intake down. We were able to get them down to 21%. And we followed them up because the people who have had one melan, I mean, basal cell cancer often get more. So we followed them for two years. And the people that had the low fat diet had fewer skin cancers than the people that stayed on the standard American diet. And moving on to microbiome, now in, in melanoma, there's lots of these studies now coming out looking at the gut microbiome in melanoma patients. This is one that um, found that people with melanoma had more of the potentially bad pathogenic fusobacterium compared to the healthy volunteers. And then they found that people who had early stage melanoma had a higher microbial diversity, i.e. a healthier gut, than the people who had late stage melanoma. Here's another melanoma study from Australia, and they looked at the healthy eating index in the year before diagnosis, and the people with the healthiest eating index score were less likely to be diagnosed with the thick melanoma. The thicker the melanoma, the worse the prognosis. And the people that had the lowest healthy eating index score were more likely to have a thick melanoma. So those folks that had the low scores had lower intakes of the fruits, the greens, the beans, whole grains, plant proteins, and they also had higher intakes of saturated fat. So again, the fat seems to be implicated in causing skin cancer. This one was a shock to us when it came out because we, you know, it really hit home about the fish because they found that the people who ate the most fish, three servings a week or so, had 22% more cases of melanoma than those who ate hardly any fish. And the authors uh, thought possibly it was due to um, contaminants in the fish like mercury or arsenic since our oceans are so polluted. 
Um, this one looked at diet and melanoma prognosis, found that those who ate the most fruit daily had improved survival, and those eating red meat daily had worse survival. So in conclusion, I think you know, we've got lots of mounting evidence all the time that the best diet for skin health are eating the plants because they're so rich in antioxidants, minerals, uh, vitamins, phytonutrients. That high fiber diet that you get with a plant-based diet promotes the healthy gut microbiome, which reduces these chronic inflammatory skin diseases like eczema, psoriasis, and acne. And then avoiding the dairy, the animal products, the processed foods, again, promotes that healthy gut microbiome, which results in healthy skin. Thank you. Thank you.